G'day everyone, Tim from vMix here. And in this video today, we're going to be talking about how you can use your own video files as custom stinger transitions in vMix. Now, as of vMix 24, we've made things a little bit easier by adding stinger templates directly into vMix. So you can add a stinger transition into your production with just a couple of clicks. Now you can also use the GT title designer to create custom stingers now as well. So if you'd like to learn a little bit more about that, check out the videos in the description or the one that's linked up here somewhere. Now, if you are a complete beginner to using stinger transitions or stingers in your production, definitely check out those videos first. Now, if you are watching this video, you probably already know what a stinger transition or a stinger is. If somebody has given you the task of working this out and trying to create one, then uh, a stinger transition is a transition usually between live content and replay content, uh, or just a fancy way to do a transition. It will usually bring content full screen, like an image or a video file. And when it goes full screen, it'll display some content and then a transition will happen behind it. Makes the production just a little bit more dynamic. I'm gonna show you how you can set that up in vMix now with your own video file. Now, typically you're going to require an MOV file that has an alpha channel. There may be some other files that you can use, but typically it's just going to be an MOV with alpha. Now you can purchase these from various stock video websites, or you can build your own in something like After Effects. Now you can use the MOV files as a stinger in vMix, but that has its disadvantages. So typically MOV files use a lot more CPU and you can't really select an individual frame for a transition for the stinger. So for those reasons, the best way is to convert that video file into an image sequence so that you can use it as a stinger in vMix. Now this can be done using the vMix video tools. And what it will do is it will create a PNG image from each frame of the video, which makes it easier to process and much easier to pinpoint when you want your transition to take place. All right, so once you have your MOV file, whether you've created it or you've purchased it and downloaded it from somewhere, what you wanna do is place it into its own folder. Now, when you create the image sequence, you're gonna have potentially hundreds of PNG image files. So it's a lot easier if everything's separate in its own folder, so you don't have hundreds of files floating around your desktop or in a random folder somewhere. So what we're gonna do now is break up the video into the image sequence. So what you'll need to do is you'll just need to go into the hamburger menu, which is in the bottom right-hand corner of vMix down here, click on it, and then select vMix Video Tools. So once you've done that, up the top here, you'll see the task that you wanna do. So you wanna select create image sequence. So we've selected that. And as you can see, it says create an image sequence from a source file containing an alpha channel. Then what we wanna do is select the source file. So we click browse here, and that will open up the ability to find your video file. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, this is my tutorial folder that I have everything in. And then I've created a stinger folder and then I put my MOV file in here. As you can see, this is a um, three, two second MOV file called star. So this is just a video file that I wanna use as my stinger. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to click open. Now you'll see down below it, it says output file. So this is the location of the output of all of those images that you're creating. Now, as you can see here, it's gonna go into the same folder. Uh, and it's also going to give it the same name. So for example, it's I called it star.mov, that's the name of my video file. So that means all of my image sequence will be star 00001PNG or something like that. So if I wanna change that, I can click browse here. Uh, I can select a folder and I can choose a new file name if I wanted to do that. However, I like to kind of keep it all the same so I don't get confused. I get confused easily. All right, so once that's done, once you've worked out where you wanna put it, what you wanna call it, just click the convert button down here and that will then convert the file and then say conversion complete. Then we just need to close this down. So now we have an image sequence that has been created from each frame of the MOV file that we have. So what we need to do is now add that image sequence into vMix to use as a stinger. So what you'll need to do is to go to add input, then go over here to image sequence and then you'll need to browse for your image sequence. Now here you can see my folder. So this is the star MOV file that we had before. And here's all of the PNG images that we have. So this is the sequence of images that were created from each frame of the video. 
So what you'll need to do is select the very first PNG file. So that's going to be whatever name you called it and then 00001.png. So that's that first PNG file. So you need to select that and then click open. And then what we'll need to do is just click OK. And that's going to load up the image sequence for you in vMix. Now, first things first, we'll just need to go into the image uh, here and then just go to color adjust and select pre-multiplied alpha, which will display uh, that file better. So for MOV and image sequence uh, with alpha, we're just going to select pre-multiplied alpha. Now, that, that does look a little bit weird. Um, if you've got a different sort of file, um, just untick that. But typically, you'll just need to tick the pre-multiplied alpha key. All right. So next, what we need to do is we're just going to load this up into the preview. So now I've got my image sequence into the preview here. And you can see that it's been broken down into each frame. So you can see total, we have 60 frames total. And what we need to do is work out where we want to have our transition. So when the content changes behind it. So typically you want to select a full screen point. So there's quite a number of full screen points here. So we're just going to select one around the middle here. So we'll go 35. And as you can see, the, the whole screen has been filled up. So when the transition takes place, it's going to have the full effect. Okay, so now that we've got our image sequence in vMix, we can create a stinger out of it. So we'll just need to go to the overlay menu in the bottom right hand corner, click on it, and then we'll go and select a stinger channel that we're not using. So I'm just going to select stinger number one today. Then for type, we need it to be full screen because that's what a stinger is. It's a full screen transition. Uh, the effect will need to have cut. Uh, the effect duration doesn't matter because the cut overrides that. So no matter what we have in here, the cut will override that uh, duration. So you can leave that. Um, now, what we need to do is select the duration of the particular file. So what we can do is we can select it here so we know that we've got it. So star 00001.png is our stinger input. So select that. And then for the duration, you'll see here that we have 60 frames. So we need to make sure that this is set to 60. So that's the total duration of the stinger. And we've got the frames selected here. And then for the stinger cut point, it was 35. So we've now set the cut point and the duration for the uh, stinger transition. Now, if you had an MOV file, what you would do is select the MOV file from the stinger input, and then you would need to work out the cut point for that. It makes it a little bit harder because it's not broken up into frames. Uh, whereas if you use an image sequence, it is. But that's how you would set up the MOV and then you'd have to work out the cut point for it. Now, a sort of new feature that we've added is the ability to have the stinger appear underneath your overlay. So there's a tick box here. So if you had something like this, a logo or a bug that stays on the screen all the time, you could go ahead and tick this box here that says display underneath overlays. But we're not going to do that today, uh, but that's something that you can consider or play around with for your production. So once that's done, we're just going to click OK down the bottom. So now we need to work out an easy way to use the Stinger. So from the transition panel in the center here, use the little arrow here and you can select Stinger 1 to add it to the transition panel to make it easy to go from preview to program. Also, you can set up uh, your shortcuts to do that as well. So Typically, when you have a shortcut for a transition, it'll be a cut, a fade, a wipe or something. But you can go to the transition section of the shortcuts. And instead of using a typical one like a fade, you can use Stinger 1. So you would select Stinger 1 and then set up the shortcut that way to use Stinger 1 for the transition. All right, so we are pretty much done now, I think. So what I'm going to do now is just put this video in here and we're going to hit the Stinger 1 button and it should hopefully uh, transition using the stinger. So let's try that out. So there you go. So it's gone from my camera to this video using that stinger, but the transitions happen behind it like so. So it looks like everything is set up and working properly, which is good news. So now you might be wondering, well, how do I add audio to my stinger? I need to have a really cool sound to plays when my stinger transition happens. Well, what you'll need to do is you will need to create an MP3 or a WAV file that you want to use for the stinger. Make sure that it's the same length or shorter because vMix will cut it off once the you know, stinger transition finishes. So make sure it's shorter than that. And then what you'll need to do is rename it to the same name of your stinger. So let me just fire up the folder here and I'll show you what I mean. So as you can see here, I've got an MP3 file called star 00001.png.mp3. 
So what I need to do is rename it the exact same name as the first image in my image sequence. And then I need to put it into my folder with the stinger. So now, as you can see, I have this star 00001.png.mp3. So that matches the same name as the PNG first file of the image sequence. So that's what you need to do in order to add it. Now I'll add the help file down below if you didn't quite catch that, uh, if you wanna um, learn how to do that, but that's exactly what you need to do. Call the MP3 file the same name as the first image in the image sequence. All right, so typically you wanna do that before adding the image sequence into vMix. That way it will automatically pick it up. But because we added it after the fact, we can't use the audio here. So I'm clicking on the audio, there's nothing there. So what you'll need to do is just re-add this into vMix. Let's just go and add this again. Okay. Uh, and let's just double check the settings. It all should still be here, 60, 35. Yep, so that's all still there. And so now I have the ability to turn on the audio for that because it's been assigned to it. All right, so let's test that out. Let's uh, fire up this stinger with audio. Make sure you've got it turned on. So the audio is now on for the uh, file and let's go ahead and fire it up. There we go. So you should have heard some audio play as that transition takes place now. Now, although not officially supported, you could also add the audio file into vMix and then add it as a layer to the image sequence, uh, but it's easiest to just kind of add it into the same folder so it will play out with the uh, image sequence when you play it. So if you do have any questions about custom stingers or anything like that, feel free to drop us an email via the support page on vmix.com as it's really hard to answer diagnostic questions via YouTube comments. Now the video file that I use today is from a place called Video Blocks. That's with the blocks with an L. Uh, and we have a, like a subscription there where we can use video files and that sort of thing. So there's plenty of places like that out there if you wanna create uh, or purchase a, a custom one instead of using the GT title designer. Alrighty, so thanks for watching and we'll stream you later. Now that you've reached the end of this video, here are a couple of other things that might tickle your fancy. If you like to keep up to date with vMix videos, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. For a free 60-day trial of vMix Pro, head over to vMix.com.